everybody. I'm so excited to be back here after a uh, two-week hiatus, right? No, just one. Oh, we just took one week, but it's yeah. been two weeks since we broadcasted, yes. so it just seems like it's been so long since we've hung out with everyone. I'm Lindsay, the Frugal Crafter, and with me today is Sarah. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. And we are going to be taking your questions as we paint this orchid, this loose orchid painting today, and just type them in all caps in the chat if you want Sarah to ask me a question. Now, I get a lot of repeat questions throughout the broadcasts I've noticed so I'm only going to answer each question once so if you come in late and you have a question um, and I don't answer it it's probably already been answered so you can refer back to the beginning of the video if you need to so I'm going to show you a couple different different options um, the palette I'm using today is the Turner watercolors and these are from our sponsor Jerry's Artorama.com and there are links to everything I used in the video description and the colors I'm using are turquoise I'm using a uh, rose red, you can use quinacridone magenta. Um, I am using sap green and permanent gamboge. You could also use um, cadmium yellow if you don't have gamboge. This example here was done using alizarin crimson instead of um, the quinacridone magenta or rose red and cadmium yellow instead of new gamboge and um, using ultramarine blue instead of turquoise. So you can use what you have. Use the colors you like. If you, if you prefer this colorway, use these colors. Um, how's everything look over there? Because you're uh, okay. It's a little blurry and a little choppy, but I know that could be that computer said, too. Nobody said anything on this end, so all right. We're also broadcasting with internet that's five times faster. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Then we, we used to have, have it in rural Maine. Yes, <laughs> rural Maine is leaped into the 20th century. So, uh, so that's exciting. The pattern for this is available on my blog, thefrugalcrafter.wordpress.com. I've already transferred mine down. And the first thing I'm going to do is get a big brush, nice big juicy one. Um, if that, this is a huge one. This is a um, a size 30. Anything like I'd say around size 10 or so or bigger would be good, or a size 8 or bigger. And I'm just going to start flicking on some water. If you could let us know how things look on your end. Regina if, Hay says it looks good. Good, good. I'm going to be talking to my friend Cinnamon Cooney, the art sharper soon. Um, she's going to walk me through the encoding software she uses because now I have internet that's about as fast as hers, so I'm really excited. So the reason we're not just brushing water on our paper is because I want some areas that are um, randomly wet so that my paint can kind of flow here and there without me guiding it too much. Now we're going to take some um, new gamboge or cad yellow, whatever warm yellow you have. Yeah, we, uh, we have m multiple people saying the picture looks good. So oh, good, good, good. It's probably just this little laptop. Yeah, she is, Sarah's using my really old laptop for just monitoring and checking out the chat. And I'm going to outline the petals on this flower here. The one, it's behind. This is kind of the focal flower. This one's behind. Now on this example, I didn't like how tight my edges were here and how harsh they were so I'm going to try to let them let the paint flow out a little bit more on this but I'm just starting by outlining the edges so if it gets into like a puddle over here I'm going to let it go I, I want that kind of loose background all right in fact I wouldn't mind it flowing out a little bit more so I think I'm going to help it with a little bit of um of spray now I just got a does or is this still broadcasting over there? I just got a yep. notification on there. Okay, hopefully it's <laughs> hopefully the stream is still working. I am just uh, adding a little bit of this yellow in the background as well. Now I'm going to clean off my brush, and I am going to just kind of wet the paper around the yellow, and then just touch into the yellow and let it flow inward. And I'm cleaning my brush each time I go to a new petal. I find using a big brush like this really helps. Everyone's still chatting. They can still, nobody's saying that things have yeah, gone. Are, um, Rose Ryan wants to know the name of the brush. This is a, a mimic um, synthetic squirrel. So there's the synthetic Kalinsky sables, which have a little bit more snap. They're the red-handled ones. These are the squirrels, and I just have the basic set of five. I really like them. They hold a lot of water. They're a little bit softer than a Kalinsky, but um, they come to a nice sharp point. As you can see, this brush is a really sharp point, even though it's a really fat brush, so I can get a lot of control with it. Now I'm going to clean my brush off well. And I'm going to dip right into my quinacridone magenta, but you can use any cool based red you have. You could use permanent rose, you could use alizarin crimson, you can use rose red, you can use 
whatever you want. And look, I'm just letting that paint go. And you get some really fun, interesting effects. Just try not to um, try not to force it too much. Just try to let it do its thing. And I'm leaving some of the white of the paper just to um, add a little sparkle. We'll be going in and adding more details in the center of the flower later. What we want right here is just some kind of loose, um, loose paint happening. I'm going to go over here and add to my sap green. Did we have a question? Uh, yes. Cynthia Pol Polanco, are you going to have a giveaway? Um, I wasn't planning on it, but I do have quite a few of these paintings, so what the heck, why not? Uh, after the broadcast, leave a comment leave, um, in, the, in the comment section, and I will pick somebody in a week. That will make sure everybody has a chance to leave a comment, even if they have to pop out for a bit. Because I know it's, it can be hard to sit through a, a one-hour um, live broadcast, because life happens. You know, your dog starts hacking something up, and you got to go tend to where the dog gets out of the cat food, and you have to go, you know, rescue it. We have naughty dogs. Our dogs are independently naughty today. <laughs> Middle-aged, stubborn dogs. Uh, Scottish Bloom, can watercolor be done on canvas? You can get a special watercolor canvas. Uh, Fredericks makes it, and it's available either stretched or um, on you know, a canvas pad. And also you can get uh, Daniel Smith watercolor ground, and I believe you could use that to treat a canvas if you want. You just want to be careful where a stretch canvas is kind of flexible. Um, you want to make sure that your paint's not going not gonna to crack and, and pop off, and that's what will happen if you work on an untreated canvas. Um, and there's also aqua boards and liquid art panels. There's a new product. I haven't tried it, but it's, um, it's something Jerry started carrying, and it's a liquid art panel, and I think it's meant for, like, liquid media because it's got like lips or like a lip around the edge so that the stuff won't slide off it's kind of a uh, it's kind of neat and i'm just kind of like tapping out a little water and letting some of that green flow out so this might look like a hot mess but it's we're going for a very loose wash and letting the pay, the watercolor kind of do what it wants to do i'm also going to just randomly wet some of the areas and put in a little bit of my turquoise blue because i know i'm going to want to get that integrated i would recommend that you go with a blue that's not a terribly strong blue like um go with a a cobalt or a cerulean like i use ultramarine in the one um, at the class i did at the library because that's what i had um and that was even a little stronger than i wanted so working with some pretty subtle colors with the blue. Uh, let's see. S. Young. Hi, Lindsay. Hello. The other day you were doing a video where we could only see your hands. Did you get a new ring? Um, I don't know. I don't. I've had the, the, I usually wear these two. I might have been wearing a different one for one video. Or maybe it wasn't me. I don't know. <laughs> You don't have you haven't purchased any new rings. I haven't purchased any, any new rings. No, I haven't. I haven't. I uh, I tend to be afraid to this is like the only real jewelry I own. All my other stuff's costume jewelry because I'm so afraid of uh of losing it. Okay. Uh A N V zero one zero seven eight nine. Thoughts on Reeves watercolors. I find they don't flow well, but not sure if it's my paper or the paint. I've been using Canson watercolor cards 140 pounds. Okay, um, what a lovely name. <laughs> you know, a long string of names. Oh, yeah. Letters, so nobody got that joke. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, the Reeves paints are student grade. They're probably like a step below a Cotman, and I think they're actually manu manufactured by the same company as, uh, as Cotman and Windsor Newton. But um, because the student grade has a lot of like fillers and extenders to keep the price down and to keep the volume of paint up, a lot of times they won't flow. So um, I'm very familiar with the Canson watercolor cards. Uh, they usually have quite a bit of sizing and will flow fairly well. One thing you could do though, um, get a little bit of, there's a product called, and I'm doing the same thing to this car, this flower as I did to that one. There's a product called Gum Arabic. And if you put some of that into your paint, just a couple, just a few drops, what it is is the binder that comes with the paint, but it also increases flow and transparency. And if you add that to your paint, you will get more of the properties. It will flow more. It'll be a little more transparent. Colors might be a little bit weaker, but I don't think it'll be too noticeable. There's also a product called Ox Gall, which will do a similar um, thing. And you can get a synthetic Ox Gall so that it doesn't actually contain Ox Bladder. So, Ox Bladder? Yeah, Ox Gall is the name of it, and it's made from an Ox Bladder or Cow Bladder. But, you know, I mean, they're using the cow. Might as well use the whole part I, of I it. I mean, meat and you use the bladder. There you go. Cow. 
Um, the Witty Gritty Paper Company. I know this isn't an art question, but I was wondering, how do you deal with negative, non-constructive comments on your videos? I love your channel and would value your thoughts. Um, well, you know, if, if I'm going to, and this is awful because I love, most people leave really nice comments, but if I can, I know I'm feeling like kind of, if I'm having an insecure day or I won't check comments because I know that it, there could be a hundred really nice ones. It's going to be that one that yeah. that's tearing me down that will be I won't even want to be able to deal with it but for the most part I just I try not to give them any weight in my thoughts I just try to move on like this video this had a thumbs down yesterday after I skipped well, this show, it had a thumbs down on it before anyone had seen it like come on yeah. nobody's seen it how you don't even know it's going to be crappy yet <laughs> come on you haven't seen my new internet connection the exactly exactly well and I think too there's just I think a lot of people that do leave negative comments leave negative comments because they can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I try. Granted, I'm not on Facebook or any, I'm not on any social media, so I don't have to deal with it. But there's always going to be people that are going to just say nasty things to be nasty. Right. And it's hard, but you can't take it personal. And who knows? Maybe they're having a really terrible time in their life, and this is how they're dealing with it by being nasty to other people. Yeah, and that's right. You don't know. You don't. This they could be a kid. They're probably a kid. Yeah. They're probably, or you know, they could be somebody that's you know mentally challenged, and they don't know any better. Or you know, you have no idea what somebody else is going through. And I try to think of that. It's like somebody could just be having a really crap day, and whatever it is I said made them just think, oh, you think you're so upbeat all the time. Well, I'm going to knock you down a peg or whatever. I mean, you know, just, yeah. Some people just don't like perky. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's see. The Pink Stamp Girl. Hi, Lindsay. Have you tried oh, Dr. That. P. H. Martin Hydra's watercolors yet? You know, I haven't, and I'm thinking I need to because I had so many people ask me about the, them. They're a liquid watercolor. They're quite expensive, and I've always honestly been really happy with the um, student liquid watercolor that you come in, like, the eight-ounce bottles. You can get any, like, a uh, school supply outfit, um, and they're, like, $2 for a big, big thing, and I use them to make my spray inks and in my kids' classes and stuff. So because I have those, I've never felt the need to to try the more expensive ones, but I love their Bombay India ink, so I bet their their watercolors are fantastic. And if anybody wants to chime in, please do in the comments. Let me know what you think. They probably have. I'm a little behind. Um, oh, and there's a well. There's a delay well, too. There's a lot of chatting and things, so that's good. Uh, Cynthia Polanco, can you use Chameleon Pen refill ink as normal ink? Um, it's an alcohol ink, so use it in any way, like any way you would use, like a Ranger alcohol ink. I'm going to make a brown for a stem, and I'm actually going to switch to a smaller brush to do it so I don't incorporate too much water. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to take some of the rose red that I was using, whatever your red is, and I'm going to add it to my sap green. And look at that, it makes a nice brown. If you want to darken it, you can add a little bit of your blue, whatever blue you're using. If you want to lighten it, add a little bit of yellow. So you're basically making mud. But if you have nice uh, watercolors, it's actually harder to mix mix browns with nicer watercolors or nicer paints because they're so pure. The cheaper ones are easier to because they have more fillers and they're less um, they're less pure. So I'm just putting in a stem here, but I'm letting my colors flow if they want to. The this exercise really is to kind of help you. Um, look at lost and found edges and let the watercolor do its thing so you're not trying to control every bit. It should be, I, I hope it feels very free. I know it can be frustrating. It was frustrating for one of my students last night. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it's, I think it's a fun, a fun technique to do. Uh, JPC 13 art, any tips for making your one art studio? My one art studio? Maybe she means your own art studio. Oh, probably. Um, well, if it's a home studio, I would, you know, try to find an area that isn't being used for anything else. Maybe it's a spare bedroom, a corner of your basement. Maybe it's just a corner of your office. Um, and get some storage that can accommodate your supplies. I would look at what you have before you go buy things. See what you, first see what you have 
as far as things that need to be stored and then see um, what you already have in your home that can accommodate it. If it's in a public space, like if it's in your living room, you may need to, it might need to look pretty, but if it's not, if it's just like, you know, away in your office where no one's going to see it but you, you know, you can really look at function. I'm picking up any puddles here that I think might make some, some ruffly shapes that I don't want. Um, I would also just, you know, try to fit, make sure you have some good lighting, like right here over my table, I've got two kind of pointing at 45 degree angles from my paper, about uh, two and a half feet up, I've got some pedestal lamps. So those work really well for me for light, get some daylight bulbs or reveal bulbs, whatever, uh, whatever you can afford, they're not too expensive. And, um, you know, just make sure you have a comfortable chair that's going to give you back support. And I think that's pretty much all you need to do. I'm using some sap green. I'm just kind of putting in a um, a leaf that kind of actually, you know what? I could show you my. I did put a photograph of my flower on uh, Facebook and my website. I've got this bizarre peacock thing clipped to it. I get a, why is that? There's there because uh, the weird peacock thing. It's there because I got left out when I undecorated the tree, and I was too lazy to take it upstairs to the attic to put it with the the, the other decorations. But there's my flower. This is, you can't see that very well. But anyways, there's these really thick, stocky leaves. And so I'm just going to put a big, thick green shape there uh, to represent that. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. But, um, but I'm going to. So you can either go right in with a paint or you can add water and then put the paint into it. Uh, Rodrigo Paez, question, Ooh. which color should I buy for a starting palette? Well, I do have, um, if you go onto my website and search basic supplies, I do have a list of the six colors that you should definitely have according, well, for what I think anyway, and um, also a couple others. But what I recommend, and you can use your own preference because that's how you develop your style and your signature look. You want two versions of each of your primaries. So you want um, a warm blue and a cool blue. You want a warm red and a cool red. And you want a um, warm yellow and a cool yellow. So, like, crimson's a cool red, cadmium red's a warm red. Um, gamboge or cadmium or warm yellows, lemon is a cool yellow. So, just kind of looking like that, you want to have a warm and a cool for each color. So, when you mix, you can get some really vibrant colors. I also like to have sap green and... Um, yellow ochre and burnt sienna in a basic palette but it, but if you know you're just getting started start with your basics because you can mix pretty much anything uh danielle grader have you tried out those visual journals you showed in your haul video a few weeks ago i have tried the 140 pound watercolor one it's fantastic i have actually um i'm teaching some workshops this summer and i'm thinking about suggesting that as the, uh, the the book to work in um that's really good i haven't tried the the other three that i got but um but i've always been pretty happy with the strathmore stuff i'm bleeding in my heat tool because um i want to let this dry before i go in and add any detail to the flowers at least get the center of the flowers dry but um you can continue to ask me questions this will take a couple minutes to dry out uh let's see this is a question by betty hayden Hi, Lindsay. I watch all your tutorials and have learned so much. Thank you for sharing your talents. Oh, thank you so much, Betty. Is that her name? Uh, Betty. Hi, Betty. Thank you. Uh, Gracie Shack One. Big fan of yours, Lindsay. Oh, Gracie. Gracie's my pal. And true about negative comments. I'm afraid with art and crafts, sometimes you just gotta ignore it. Happy painting, Lindsay. You rock. Oh, you too, Grace. Uh, Cinnamon is saying the connection is great. Oh, thank you, Cinnamon. I'll call you later and we'll walk through that. Uh, your fancy stuff. She uses fancy things. Fancy, she's going to tell me all about a fancy, fancy setup that she's got. <laughs> uh, no one, Marcy. I've been trying to find an affordable watercolor block, but no luck. So if anyone tell me, is there really that much of a difference between taking down your paper and using your watercolor block? And why would anyone thumb down the food crap there? <laughs> People. <laughs> um, watercolor block eliminates the need for taping. That's really all it does. Um, it's handy, but you know, factor in a roll of uh, the cost of a roll of tape. You know, you're really going to pay a lot less if you just tape it down yourself. It will still buckle on the block. It's not going to be lying flat, flat, flat like if you stretched it like wet paper to a board. So it's it's exactly the same as um, as taping it down. Uh, Strathmore 400 makes a decent watercolor block, not as good as Arches, but not too bad. And Canson Montville makes a decent watercolor block. Again, not as good as Arches, but you can definitely in the ten to twenty dollar range get a variety of sizes. Uh, let's At our sponsor, jerrysoutorama.com. 
Susan Carson, can you add gum arabic and glycerin together? Yes. Yep. They often they're both in both found in the same tubes. Often. Uh, Elsa Cleary, what is the best weight of paper to use for watercolors? You know, that's that's preference. Um, honestly. It's it's what you can afford. Three, uh, some people swear by three hundred pound because you don't have to tape it down. It's not it's not going to buckle, and it's and it's wonderful, but it's really expensive. I end up doing sometimes four or five paintings of the same thing. So like these two practices that I did, I did them on ninety pound, not ninety pound aqua bee paper. It's one hundred percent cotton. Aqua is a great brand, and but getting ninety pound, it's as cheap as like the cheapest student grade papers. So it's going to buckle a little bit if I don't stretch it for practice big deal but if you know that warping if i was going to spend a long time on a painting that might bother me and this is also done on the 90 pound see it's, it wrinkles i could iron it if i wanted to uh so you know i use different papers depending on what the outcome is going to be this is 140 pound 100 percent cotton i think this one's arches um so you know this would be more this is not going to buckle so much because it's thicker and i've taped it down but you know if i had 300 pound arches it wouldn't buckle at all but i really wouldn't bother with a weight like that unless i really have some um big plans for the painting so it's personal preference i think it's better to go with a lighter paper that's a better quality than a cheaper paper that's a heavier quality but that's just you know that's my opinion here i'm gonna i'm actually gonna take a little bit of the aqua and add it to that red I'm sorry, it's turquoise, but it's just, it's a very, um, I've had turquoises from other brands that are more like phthalo blue. So this actually looks a lot more like a cerulean, but this is the turquoise in the Turner watercolor line. And I'm mixing it with some of this quinacridone magenta. So I get this nice uh, reddish purple color. I just need a little more contrast from the, the reds that I already have there. And I'm going in and it's almost going to be like I'm outlining certain aspects here, like the edges of these lobes. And if you need to refer back, if you use the pattern and you need to refer back to your sketch, that's that's fine. That old that really is helpful, I think, once you've like put in the background and it's hard to see what you've already put down. So I've switched to a smaller brush. You could even go smaller if you want. This is a, a mimic um, a synthetic squirrel a, a number four. I like these because they hold a lot of paint. I was thinking I preferred the mimic Kalinskis, but the more I use the squirrels, I think because I tend to be more of a looser painter, I prefer these. But if you're a little bit more of a detail-oriented painter, you, you'll probably prefer the uh, synthetic sables. I like to have a variety. You know, something, my attitude might be a little more carefree one day and I'll want to use a different brush. Now, after I've got those little uh, details in, I'm going to clean my brush off. The same technique we've been doing. I'm going to, it's it's clean. I'm going to blot it. So I just take up, off the little bit of extra water. I'm going to paint next to it. So I dampen the uh, the area of that lobe and then just touch the edge and let it let the colors meet. Uh, Sar Ahmed, can you do a pencil shading tutorial, please? Oh, you know, I don't think I've done any of those. I would love to. Is there any subject in particular? Um, doesn't he doesn't say? Oh, there's a thirty second delay. So if he comes back, just uh. And I'm probably forty five seconds behind on questions. Oh, that's all right. It's. Um, it's funny about the delay. It's almost like I'd like to turn the delay off, especially if it's just me, because, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like I'm going to swear or anything. I don't know about you, though. I'm going to watch out for you. <laughs> for me? <laughs> I'm me. just kidding. Oh, I am not the troublemaker in this relationship. <laughs> <laughs> I am an innocent bystander. Yep. I respect my elders. Oh, <laughs> that's harsh. <laughs> uh, the pink stamp girl, stamper girl. Can you tell me what is the best watercolor brushes are to buy and wear? Thanks, Brianna. Oh, again, it's it's um, complete personal preference, and also what sort of supplies you have in your area. Um, we're lucky in the states; we have so much to pick from, but um, other places don't. I would say if you stick with like. A reputable brand. Um, I like Creative Mark, which is what Jerry, it's, it's Jerry's house brand, so it's really inexpensive. Um, Robert Simmons, anything by by them. Windsor Newton, Lowell Cornell. If you stick with a with a name brand, you'll do all right, I think. Now on this petal, I've wet it. I wet I wet kind of like in a V area, and then I just added some of that color and let it let it kind of whoosh up. Now I'm going to take some of that purpley that I mixed, but just a little heavier on the red. With that same brush and I'm just gonna kind of uh, oh watch out if you get a bead of water on your brush 
like up on the ferrule. Sometimes it will slide down and make a mess on your painting. So if you ever see a bead of water, don't try to race it. Just dab it. <laughs> yeah, try, oh, I'm going to paint that before that. Yeah, you'll lose. <laughs> you'll lose that race. Every time. Um, so what I'm doing is just kind of putting the squiggly line here. Oh, i got to get my credit card scraper out. Oh, what is it? I think it's in. Uh-oh. Okay. Um, let's see. Gracie Shack 1. There we go. Credit tutorials. Tutorials editing for people who are new doing art craft tutorials. Please thank you. Maybe oh. she's looking for tips. Oh, tips for editing? Yeah. There are a lot of tutorials on YouTube. Um, I don't edit too much, so I don't feel too, too qualified to give advice, but I like a product called Corel. Uh, Video Studio Pro. That's what I use. It's not crazy expensive, and I find it's very intuitive. Now, what I did here was I actually had some wet paint. Some of the paper's wet. Some of it's dry. I drag some of that color down with a brush. I'm going to drag some with my credit card scraper as well. This is just a piece of an old credit card that I've cut up. It's nothing fancy at all. And I'm just dragging it kind of back and forth to get those veins. Now, if I feel like any part of that is too stark, or I have a hard line or something, I'm just gonna take a clean wet brush and just um, and just touch it wherever I feel like I need to spread the color a little bit. Just clean your brush each time you do that and that will keep your colors nice and fresh. And that's the, the same uh, process we're gonna do on each of these petals, so if anybody has questions, you go ahead and fire them at me and I'm just gonna continue going around in that same fashion. Okay, Courtney Haskell, you often use watercolor. Any instances where you would prefer prefer a different medium yes um, anytime I'm gonna be building something where I'm gonna want to kind of work in layers I would generally prefer oils or mixed media and I typically don't I paint in acrylics because of the convenience but that's I don't feel I don't enjoy the process of painting with acrylics as much it's it's I enjoy it but it's 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 I would rather paint with oils or watercolor generally um, just because I don't like how fast it dries, I like being able to kind of ponder and fuss, and you can do that with oils. Mixed media is great because you can keep adding different things until you've got exactly what you want. Uh, Wu Shin, any advice on starting an art YouTube channel? Um, yes, um, upload frequently. Um, keep practicing. Don't don't even look at your subscriber numbers or your your you know if you decide to monetize it don't let the number that YouTube tells you you're worth reflect what you feel you're worth because when you get started I remember when I when I first started my channel and back then you had to be invited to be a YouTube partner and allow an ad on your video and I remember getting an email from YouTube saying that my you know, DIY do drops video had received enough views at that point. It was 2000 views to be eligible for monetization. So I thought, Oh great. I'll, I'll uh, click that button. And after about two weeks, it had made like three cents or something. And I'm <laughs> like, this is ridiculous. So I turned off monetization and I never turned it back on again until about two years ago. So I think it gets very frustrating when people are looking at their, their numbers as, as to how much they're making and how much, cause the, the amount of work you put, you're going to put into a channel. It's not going to seem worth it. If you, if your goal is to make, um, add money on it, but if you love it, if you're passionate about it, uh, you know, you're not going to need my advice. You're just going to go forth and, and have a good time with it. That's, that's really would be my advice. Have a good time. Meet some amazing people. Don't be afraid to reach out to other YouTubers that you like because most of us are pretty darn friendly and want to help each other. There's a great group called the Creative Arts Collaboration, which is all DIY YouTubers, all different sizes, and we all just help each other. And it's, it's really, it's really nice. Cinnamon, that's how I met Cinnamon, actually. And now look at where you guys I are. I know. We're videos doing... together. She's yeah. going to walk you through a new process of your videos. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, yeah. I remember when my first time I wanted to do something live, I talked to Melody Lane, and I hardly knew her, but she was the sweetest woman. She helped me so much. It was, uh, it was great. Uh, Simply says, I wanted to know if it's safe to use masking fluid with watercolor. Yep, that's what it's for. You can apply it to dry paper, let it dry, paint over it. You can actually wet your paper and drip it into wet paper, let it dry and paint over it. Um, it's a very versatile medium. It's a, it's a lot of fun. The only thing I don't like about it is waiting for it to dry um, because you have to let it dry before you can paint over it. So I'm a little impatient. I tend to paint a little bit more directly, but it's wonderful stuff. Uh, Sabina Last, which is your favorite coloring media? Oh boy, gosh, that's hard. Um, 
I really like watercolor markers. I like alcohol markers too. I like watercolor pencils, but I, that's probably maybe more of a painting medium. That's that's tough. I because I like so many. Um, and there's so many good ones out right now. I'd probably say, I'd probably say watercolor pencils. But I don't know. Ask me tomorrow when we have a different answer. <laughs> I like them all. That's my problem is that I like them all. <laughs> I can't pick. Yeah. It's hard to pick. Uh, JPC 13 Art. How do you use the Copic Refills inks to refill your markers? Um, there is, you pull out one of your nibs, I believe it's a chisel nib, I haven't had to refill any of mine, um, and they sell this like little syringe that you can um, fill up with the ink and then you just push it, you just put the syringe through the hole where you've taken out the nib and you just pump it, pump the uh, ink into the pad in the center of the marker. And I would definitely recommend getting the syringe and not trying to just drop like eyedropper it in because you want to make sure you don't spill it because it can be expensive you want to make sure you don't waste it uh bonnie lee my brushes are so cheap they keep losing hair is there any way to make cheap brushes to quit losing hairs um sometimes the, your brushes will lose hair when you first get them and i find washing them with like a little shampoo or soap and water really helps um especially with cheaper brushes uh, um other than that I, I think if they're if it's just a chronic if it just chronically loses hair you might be better off just to get a, a little bit nicer of a brush you don't have to spend a lot there's a um, soft grip brush by Royal Corn uh, Royal Land Nickel they're two to three dollars each and they don't lose hair and they're wonderful to brush with they're not as nice as like these but they're um, they're not bad and on a budget you can't go wrong really uh, Ms. Thrifty Fifty, hi from Manchester, UK. Hello, I like your name. <laughs> yes. uh, new to watercoloring, struggling getting the amount of water right. What techniques can I use to improve? Love all your videos. You are such an inspiration. Oh, thank you so much. Um, the thing to remember is some brushes are thirstier than others. And if you have a brush that is, if you feel like you're always, your colors are too light and you're always getting um, too much water on the paper, try switching to a nylon brush. Like usually your nylon brushes have um, uh, brown or golden or white bristles. They tend to be a little bit shinier looking and they just don't absorb the water. So that can help you if your problem is too much water. If your problem is too little water, do the opposite. You want to go with like a, a, a synthetic um, one that mimics animal hair or a sable brush if you have them um, because they'll hold more water and more pigment and then you'll get you know you'll get more water on your paint if that's what you're if that's what you're after and I'm gonna do a little bit on these little buds over here a little sap green I don't want to define everything I love the freshness of the paint and the looseness of it so I just want to just define little bits Uh, let's see, Rita DeCook, do you have a video showing the use of blocks and arches? B-L-O-X, that, that paint, or B-L-O, or she spelled it B-L-O-C-K-S. Um, I need some clarification. If she's still there, if you could just, um, I don't know, you mean arches watercolor blocks, or? I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, pop back in and just give us a little more info, and... Uh, or maybe blocks. I think blocks is also makes some. They make paint, but I think they also make paper. I'm honestly not that picky about paper. If it's like I, I try to get 100% cotton when I can, but I mean I like a practice on cheap stuff because I paint so much, and unfortunately <clears throat> I can't sell my paintings for as much as I'd like <laughs> in this neck of the woods. Um, we've had several questions about listing the items you're using, and if you go. To look on the left, she, uh, Lindsay lists all of the materials that she's using in her um, video, um, and she also attaches links so that you can go actually see photos of what the colors and paint tubes and all brushes and stuff look like. So um, you can always check um, on her posting for her live tutorials. Yes, and my blog's a great place for that too because it's all uh, it's all laid out. You can have all the uh, like on today's today's blog post. It has all of the photos and the pattern and everything you need so that you're you know you can paint along and um 
have all that stuff. We're going to do the same thing over here. Um, so, and I like to think of this one as my practice one, and this one is the real deal. So once you, you've gotten that out of the way, you've got um, you've got to practice, and now you move over here and and uh, do it all again. So again, we're starting by mixing the purple with our turquoise and crimson. A little heavier on the crim. I'm um, sorry, crim. Well, if you're using crimson, that's fine. I'm using quinacridone, rose red, and Go ahead and put in your details. That's a little purpler than I wanted it, but that's fine because so I'm just going to go back in and uh, grab a little more red in my next brush load. Um, Living Able, what is stretching your paper and how do you do it? You soak your paper, uh, usually like 10 minutes or so in the tub, and um, then you lay it out on a board. And I like to use a hard board from the like home improvement store, also called Masonite. And then you uh, use some gum tape. It's um, it's a paper tape that's that's dry and not sticky until you wet it. Then it becomes sticky. And then I put that down on the edges, like half on the paper and half off. So like kind of like how I have it taped on here, except I would have it over a little bit more so it could really grip the paper. And then you let it dry. And when it dries, it'll be tight as a drum. Now you do have to kind of get the hang of it because like you'll want to kind of sponge your paper a little bit, take off any extra water. Everything has to be just kind of just kind of right and it's a little fussy to begin with um, and you but you can always restretch a piece if it doesn't come out right so it's not like you'll waste your paper if if you make a mistake um, but it it makes your paper just beautiful if I'm gonna do a painting that I know I'm gonna spend days on I will stretch the paper because I just know my experience is gonna be so pleasurable painting on that stretch paper I just don't always have the time to do it or I don't always take the time I guess we always have time if we if it's something that's important but I don't always take the time to do it um, Variety Girl One, how do you add details on top of other colors that have dried without getting older colors wet and smudged? Well, one key would be to try to use colors that, if if they mix with the under colors, they will be uh, vibrant. So right there, we're pointing. If you see where that purple went over the yellow, it's kind of browny and muddish. So you know you want to kind of avoid that. So when I go up here to add my details, I'm going to definitely have just the pure. Um, crimson so that I don't get that purple. I find that papers that are 100% cotton are a little bit more absorbent and the colors underneath are less likely to lift unless you're trying to. Another way to prevent the lifting is to use colors that um, that are staining, like your brighter color, like your, your magentas and your thalo blues, things that stain more as opposed to things that lift more, like your ultramarine. Uh, and things like that so they're less likely to, to pick up and mix in with your colors But just trying to keep them the same color family then you shouldn't get mud I decided to switch to a liner brush for this for the details because I really want this flower to be that my focal point So I want to make sure I have a little more detail there and I'm gonna go back in with my credit card scraper again uh, Marie McCann, how do you sign your watercolors for sale? I just print my name. I'm not I, I don't have very good penmanship. I'll show you <laughs> Sarah's got beautiful penmanship. The lady at the doctor's office say beautiful penmanship. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm so envious. But yeah, I just print my name. <laughs> Nothing fancy. Uh, Jessica XX, I'm a first ever art student at college. Any ideas of good practice things I could do to improve my skill in watercolor? Thanks. Um, I would do some like time sketches. I think the the problem most people have with watercolor is that. They're trying to make it behave like something it isn't. Watercolor is loose, it's flowing, it's um, it's got wonderful properties that are different from other paints. So instead of trying to make it behave like other paints, try to see what makes it unique. And one way to do that is to like go paint outdoors and just do quick sketches, quick five minute sketches in like a little uh, like watercolor field journal or something. And um, let, let the paint do its thing. When you time yourself, you kind of get over the um, inhibitions of okay, I've got this big piece of paper, it's got to be important. You know, if you know you only have five minutes, you're not going to worry about it being important, you're just going to try to get paint on the paper. And, you know, just practice basic things like washes and, um, you know, side loading is a great technique to practice. But I would just, you know, put the paint to paper. That's how, the, you want to learn how to paint, you got to paint. There's a, that's the best way to do it. Oh, no, I got a, I got a, got a drip. I'm not going to, not going to erase it. I'm gonna, Cinnamon also curses the bead of water on the brush. Oh, yeah, it's probably worse for acrylic. She said it's her enemy with water. It's her number one aggravation in watercolor. <laughs> uh, Rodrigo Paez, a suggestion for a pen to do line drawing with watercolor. 
Um, there is a product called a, um, oh, I think it's called a rigging pen, and it's like a little um, little steel cup, and it's like on the end of a stick, and you fill, you drop your watercolor in there, and you can kind of draw, 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 and I think it was meant for ship painters so they could paint the riggings on a boat. It's, I think it's called a rigging pen. I think it's a drafting or ruling pen. It might be a ruling pen. Rigging pen or it was a rigging brush. Um, and oh, you know, well, anything that has waterproof ink, microns are really good. As long as you someone did mention microns in the comment. Yeah. Yeah, and those come. But I like those for detail work because, uh, like when I'm doing stamping, if I need to color in something or I want to add some detail. Yeah. They come in the different sizes. Yeah. So, sorry, I interrupted. Oh no, no, that's great. That's great. Yeah, and when you're looking at a refillable pen, sometimes the maintenance is just not worth the, yeah. the trouble. I'm I'm very lazy about that kind of stuff. Like I, <laughs> there are just certain things that are um, not worth my time. Well, you want to spend your time creating and not refilling yeah. pens and stuff. I can totally get that. Uh, Chloe Heim, him, probably saying your name wrong. I apologize. If my watercolor paper buckles, can I flatten it once it dries? Oh yeah, I iron mine sometimes, but it doesn't hurt anything. The only thing it might bother is if you're doing mixed media and you've got some like wax um, on the paper, you've got something that's you know gonna melt on you. But for regular watercolor, it shouldn't really shouldn't really bother anything. I use some deli paper or parchment paper as a uh, as a uh, protection. I decided to move to the liner because I was feeling like my other brush was just giving me. Um, attitude? Attitude. I don't know, attitude, but it yeah. was just a little too predict predictable. I wanted something a little bit looser. I'm sorry. I'm a little sleep deprived, so I'm a little loopy today. Oh. So, um, let's see. Beverly Mossman. Hi, hey, Bev. With your YouTube channel, you can keep your personal email addy for security reasons. She must be email address for security reasons. It's a question. Um, you use your personal email email address so you can verify your channel. I think is that what she's? I don't know. That's or she mean true. is my personal email what's on my YouTube channel? I wonder. Um, I don't know. That's. Please clarify, Beverly. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna wet a little bit out here and just kind of touch the edges of that. I'm feeling like that's just a little too. I, I want it. I want it broken up a little bit, so I'm just gonna let that bleed out because I think I like that look. Just help it along there. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do all this crazy in the background, but I think it's kind of a fun, pretty technique. Uh, Sar Ahmed, Lindsay, what are your thoughts on the 3D doodler pen? You know, I think it looks fun. I'd like to try it, um, and I think I think my kids would love it. Quite frankly, it's like, uh, have you heard of that, Sarah? I haven't. It is a it sounds, pen. I mean, it sounds fun. It's like a 3D printer pen. You put like these rods oh. of um, ABS plastic, I believe. I think they have different kinds of plastics. And you can make three-dimensional artwork with it. And it looks a lot of fun. It's kind of pricey. I think the pen's about $100. And then you've got the refill packs, which there have been some off-brand um, companies coming out with them to make it a little bit cheaper. But still, it's an investment. Um, so it's kind of like, well, for a kid's toy. It's uh, a bit much, and I don't know. I, I think that the stuff is pretty brittle that it makes, unlike like a three D printer, which might actually make something that's fairly useful. Um, so it's definitely a novelty. So it's a little bit expensive considering it's a novelty, but I would love to try it because I think it looks a, like a lot of fun. But mostly because I think my kids would get a kick out of it. They probably would. They love that stuff. I think. See, I think the thing I think would be really neat is that my son would like it and he typically is not one to call himself crafty but if you get like a gadget mm. like I got the uh, cuddle cuddleola dots pen which is like this um pen that you hook to you you charge it up and it makes done makes like stippling so you can do like a stippled picture in like no time oh, cool. yes and it's it was really fun and then you can actually watercolor over it because the ink is water resistant and and I wasn't expecting that because I actually tried it and I couldn't believe that the, that the ink didn't run but um but he picked that up and just took to it like a duck to waters loved it and I just think anything like that that I think would make especially boys that tend to kind of lose that interest for art uh, you know at a pretty early age I think it would make them kind of excited so that that makes me excited yes yeah JPC 13 art would you rather never use watercolor or never use stamps again Oh, I'd have to say stamps. I couldn't give up my watercolor. It's too You've much of a part of me. I have, yeah. 
That's a good question. Oh, the hard questions yeah. come out today. You get the got the I got the fancy internet and everyone's asking me the hard questions. Uh, Northern Birder, when you stretch paper, how do you get that gummed brown tape off the sides? Honestly, I um when I when I tape it down, I will slice my paper like where the um at the edge of the paper, and then I will just um. I will actually actually usually cut it off on the inside and then I just soak the tape and pull it off the board. So I don't count on keeping the area that I've overlapped with the tape because that tape is acidic, I'm pretty sure. Oops, I keep bumping the camera. Uh, D Dreamer, I would love, love, love to see some watercolor, butterfly, and animal tutorials. Any chance for those? That sounds like fun. I don't know why I don't do animals very often. I always think my watercolor animals look a little strange. Like they look a little like this. You just can't quite tell what, but they look a little weird. Like I don't know what's wrong with that cat, but it doesn't look right. You know, I have a watercolor cat on my channel and I, I look at it and I'm thinking something's not right about that cat and I can't figure out what the heck it is. But yeah, I would do some watercolor animals. I had a few people ask for them and um, I just need to get on the stick and try it. Butterfly or dragonfly, that's a little looser. That's true. That's yeah, true. It's not a, you know. Um, Chloe Heim, what is the difference between hot and cold pressed paper? Hot press is smooth, cold press is rough. Now that varies between companies too. So some companies cold press would be very similar to another company's hot press. So, um, but generally it's been pressed with hot rollers and that's what makes it smooth. So that's why they call it hot pressed and cold press has not been uh, pressed or has been pressed by cold with cold rollers or hasn't been pressed. I don't know, but uh, cause sometimes they refer to cold pressed as not pressed. If you see a watercolor paper that says not on it, it means it's uh, cold pressed. You don't see that as much anymore. It used to be quite common to have it referred to as not. It'd be hot pressed or not. Uh, uh, Sheila Dinky, what am I doing wrong if I can't seem to blend my watercolors? Where I put the color down, it stains heavily, then it doesn't want to move too much. Am I using too much pigment? Maybe try working on wet paper. If you're trying, if your effect is, if your goal is blending, you want your paper a little wet. Uh, more or less Ruth. Lindsay, do you like Impressionism? What is your favorite artist? Thanks, and please send greetings. I think she moves to Spain. I believe she's watching us from Spain today. Oh, hello, Spain. Um, I do like Impressionism. I like a lot of art movements. Um, I have a lot of favorite artists. I like um, I like Mark Chagall. I like um, I like Moreau, who's an abstract. I, you know, I tend to like more abstract painters, ironically, even though I don't paint in an abstract <laughs> style. I like I like cheerful abstract, not like you know dark and moody abstract. So no Goya for you? No Goya for me. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm all all set with the battlefields and. Death and yeah, destroyed. no Bosch. Don't like the Bosch. Don't like the. Uh, oh, you don't like Bosch. I like them, but I like Goya too. So it reminds me. His work reminds me of scary religious paintings. They kind of are. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's like you know you visit that that you know weird aunt that always says the weird. If you don't, if you don't <laughs> be good, the, the, whoever will come. You'll be you. smited. <laughs> um, Let's see, Philip Marsh, can you do watercolor monsters? My nephews, well, and I love fun little monsters, probably for card making or such. Hmm. That would be a good Halloween one. That would be good. I did, uh, I've done some monster cards, but using stamps. I haven't done any. Uh, that would definitely be free flow. That would be kind of fun. I'll have to file that away. That sounds like something I would like to undertake. Okay, let's see. Cindy Matthews, Lindsay, you need to come up with a frequently asked question sheet about cold press versus hot press, watercolor types, brushes, etc. <laughs> yeah, I probably should. I think I do on the watercolor basics list. I think I do. Okay, so I just painted those buds back in. They're way too dark. So what I'm going to do is just kind of tap on a little water and let it do its thing. I kind of like this dirty water, so I'm flicking some more around. All right, and I feel like I could pull a little bit more color out of this flower, maybe. Maybe some yellow or some red. I'm not sure. I'm just feeling like that's a little too harsh there. I'll add a little red in there and see what that does. I 
I'm a fairly loose painter, and this is even loose loose for me. So it's it's a kind of a new technique that I'm that I'm playing with, which is kind of like have these like weird blobs of water, and then adding adding more to them. I like painting through these puddles because then it's like you don't know exactly where your uh, your paint's gonna end up. It is. It's a delightful surprise. I'm going to define my leaf a little bit down here. Maybe put in uh, Gracie Shack one. Which water brush would you recommend to buy? Um, the Karen Dosh is really nice. It, again, it depends on what you have in your area. She's from the UK, so um, I would imagine you have Prima or Karen Dosh. Prima around here, their water brush is very affordable. You get two for like eight bucks. So I'm very happy to recommend uh, people here go for that one because it's such a great buy. But that's not the case everywhere. Um, I haven't used the Tim Holtz one, but I think that's a really fine tip one if you're looking for something with a really fine tip. Karen Dosh might make a couple different, um, a couple different tips. So that might be. That might be useful if you can like choose what size you want. I'm pretty sure they have a couple different sizes. I like that one though because it's easier to refill and you can kind of has a plunger on it so you can like like collapse it down smaller if you're traveling and you don't want to have you know you need to fit it in like a little travel tin or something. Um, I'm trying to think of any the only one I don't recommend I don't like the Royal Water Brush because it doesn't have a valve in it. It le leaks way too much water and it doesn't have a fine point. I use mine to make my own like um, kind of like Mika Stella and Luka Luna pens because it's it's great for the, those larger particle things but just for water it just lets way too much out and is a little frustrating. Come here Jill. You're fine. Come here. I know it's hard being chewy. Yeah we have some really uh hard knock dogs here. Yeah they're having a rough day. Having a rough day because of the choices, the poor choices. Poor decisions big man. <laughs> All right. Food. Yes, I'm going to add a little definition to the edges of these flowers with some yellow, and I think we're going to be about done. So I'm going right back into that new gamboge. Remember, we're using the same colors all the way through. So whatever you used for your blue, keep using it for your blue. Whatever you used for your yellow, you just keep keep dipping into the same pots of paint. Otherwise, you're going to end up with um, with mud with techniques like this. You need to you need to keep it um, keep it all in the same family that you started with. Uh, older and dirt. Will there be a slower video of the magnolias? I hadn't planned on it, but I've had a lot of people ask for it. Um, I typically dump the footage after I'm done editing, so I don't think I have that footage anymore. But I might do it as a live, uh, a live show because I've had so many people ask for it. It was a fun painting to do. I used some some uh, different paints than I was used to. They were the new Grum, well, they're not new, new to me, Grumbacher transparent watercolors. And honestly, they reminded me of kids' quality paints, which made me think that, you know what, this could be painted with kids' quality paints and look about the same. So I kind of like that, though, because, but those were kind of expensive. I um, They were sent to me from the company because I'm doing a class and they like to have their products featured. Um, and so I was trying them out. But I saw, like, the prices on them. I think they were, like, I think that set of 12 was something like 30 bucks or yeah. And I'm like, yeah. you know, that's, Ooh. yeah, it didn't. Um, and I've always, and there's other products from them. I just absolutely love. So I was very uh, surprised oh. unless there's some quality about them that I'm just not getting. Like maybe they're better for something that I don't do. Like maybe they're more of an illustration. That could be. Yeah. So I don't, I don't want to, I don't like to give a negative review if I'm not sure exactly what I'm doing, you know? Uh, we have several votes for a live magnolia painting. Okay, we we'll do that next week. Mm. Yeah, we have uh, three or four votes right now saying yes. Oh, we have a fifth. Oh wow! Okay, okay. well, so I, maybe that should be next week. Well, there we go. That that just saved me about an hour next week. I already know what I'm doing. <laughs> Sweet. Check that off the list. Check that off my to do list. Absolutely. <laughs> Here I'm just putting little bits of color and then I'm just kind of, if I feel like I want it to move more, I'm just wetting next to it and letting it wick out. 
So a painting like this, if you're not used to it, can be a bit of a leap of faith, but I think it's a really fun exercise, and it really shows you what your watercolors want to do on their own. I feel like if you can go with the flow and you can use your materials the way they want to be used, you're going to have a much nicer experience when you paint. Let's yeah, go. we have uh, multiple, we have several more votes coming in for Magnolia. So I think we have a winner for next week for sure. All right, sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. Just made my week easier. Maybe you could do the Magnolia in watercolor and Cinnamon could do it in acrylic. Ooh, Whoa. that would be fun. Whoa, now we're getting crazy. Now we're, now we're getting out, we're getting. Now we're planting Cinnamon show for it too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't mind. <laughs> you don't mind Cinnamon, you don't mind. What we could do, because I'm getting fancy now, and I have actual like internet instead of two soup cans and a piece of string. <laughs> we could, uh, <laughs> I would get it probably actually both do it at the same time on the same show. It Whoa. would be, yeah, it'd be crazy. Whoa. Minds are being blown. Cinnamon's like, oh my word, I'm gonna like unfriend her from everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sharon has chalk. Lindsay, you said something earlier about using a daylight bulb for lighting. Mm -hmm. So you can use those in a regular lamp. I know I've seen special daylight lamps at the art store. Yes, you can. You just want to make sure you get them with the with the regular threaded bases. But yeah, you get the I get the spirals, just like the energy efficient spirals, but you just look for daylight balance, daylight rating. Um, I don't remember what the number Kelvin it is, but um, but you can find them anywhere and they'll be a little bit more than a regular fluorescent, but not a ton. The the thing they I don't last a lot longer. Too. Yes, they do. And the thing I don't like about the specialty ones, because I have an alt light downstairs and I rarely ever use it, is because they don't put out as much light as the spirals do. And they, um, their bulbs are expensive to replace. They're like twenty or thirty bucks to replace a bulb. So you know, it's like I rarely use it because I, you know, for one, it's like I don't want to get too dependent on it and then have to go out and buy a bulb that I might not be able to just go to Joanne's and get. I think Joanne's does have them, but you know, it's just the convenience factor. I like to be able to go to the hardware store or Sam's Club or whatever and pick it up well um, people are also maybe suggesting you do it in oils instead of watercolor the magnolian oils yeah. oh that would i would do that that would be fun ah. oh we might have something i have i don't know if cinnamon still here she hasn't responded yet she's hiding she is she's like over here <laughs> i'm out of here excited about a collaboration uh vicky corvini is it okay to use watercolor from different brands in one painting or is there something to be careful about no nope. thanks for doing those videos you're welcome you shouldn't have any problem there's one company that uses a different binder than gum arabic pretty much everybody uses gum arabic uh the golden core watercolors use aquazol as a binder and i they probably would still be fine together um because they're both designed to bind to paper but if you're just using any other watercolor, I don't think you'd have any problem. And I honestly don't even think the golden would give you any would give you any trouble either. So and you'll find out real quick if they don't work. Yeah, I can't imagine what wouldn't work. I mean the paint I paint flaking off. I I can't imagine because water because watercolor is absorbent. Correctly, well, they're both water based though, so they shouldn't yeah. repel. It's not like you're trying to mix, you know, That's oils true. and watercolor. All right, so I'm just gonna go into my tiniest brush. I'm gonna mix up some deeper purple and kind of thicker i don't want it too watery so so i'm using a smaller brush to mix so i don't end up with too much water on my brush i'm just going to get this uh look how thick that is you can see it's opaque on my on my brush because it's so thick i'm cleaning because i don't want to contaminate my gob of crimson over there i keep calling crimson it's rose it's quinacridone and make it up a nice purple now you won't have to work so hard if you're using ultramarine blue because it's it's a stronger pigment. I wanted to keep my colors a little bit softer and different than what I normally use. And I'm just going to go in and add some details. Um, add some little kind of like hairy lines here at the base of these little lobes. And I'm looking at my orchid as I'm painting, and that the photo is on my on my website if you want to check it out. Uh, Sar Ahmed, Sarah, are you a crafter too? And I am. <laughs> I dabble in watercolor. I'm not very good. Um, I do stamping and card making, and it's been a while since I've done any scrapbooks, but I have scrapbooked in the past. I do embroidery and cross stitch, and I also like to do um, like painting crafts. I make wreaths. Too. I do make wreaths. Um, I kind of and I do jewelry making. So I kind of do a little bit of everything. Um, not much for painting like Lindsay. She's the painter in the family, not me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I have a craft room, um, and I've been in there more 
this last week and I have in a while, which has been nice. So, and we did a video of setting up your craft room. We did, that we was did. fun. And if you saw the video today, you would see the piles of assorted projects in progress on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, does your room still look like it did when we finished? <laughs> it does. The only thing I've changed is I put um, some lifts underneath one of the tables yep. to make them a little higher because my leg, the top of my legs kept hitting the bottom of the table. Yep. So I just got some inexpensive wood blocks and put them underneath the legs. I have to do it to my other table, um, but I've noticed that's a big, big help. So I can really... Um, I don't have to deal with my legs bumping the table. It's not a heavy table, so every time my leg would bump it, it would send whatever I was working on to roll. Oh, yeah. Off on an adventure. <laughs> Crafty adventure of its own. <laughs> All right. Well, I think my paper's too wet to sign my name, but... Well, maybe I can squeeze it in there. Hi, I probably shouldn't tempt fate. Hold on, let's dry it. Any other final thoughts or questions from the, uh, the audience? Um, yeah. Uh, we had a request uh, to post ahead of time what medium you would be using for the magnolia painting. Okay. Oh, you know what? I have a poll. I think if you click the info card up in oh, the corner, okay. I think I put a poll in there. What medium do you want me to use next? So I think you can just click on the eye up in the upper right hand corner of the screen and vote. And how about that? You guys vote, and I will paint magnolias in the medium, and it gets the most votes. And I know a lot of you also watch cinnamon, so if you're all too gently, maybe suggest a, a, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Collaboration. collaboration. Uh, we, we might be able to make it happen. Keep in mind, I've never actually done anything outside of simple mode on YouTube live streaming, so we're just, you know, it's all there, theoretical, right? And, and Cinnamon is the key to me learning how to do that, so she may not teach me if she doesn't want to do this collaboration. Um, one last question, yep. Noah Murphy. I am still fairly new to watercolor. I wasn't able to get it until I tried stamping on the paper with permanent ink and painting the stamped image. Have you ever tried that? What is your opinion on watercolor over stamps? I think it's great. I think watercolor stamped images is wonderful. Um, you may get a little uh, frustrated because the image can tend to be small if it's a rubber stamped image, but uh, I wouldn't let that dissuade you. Just use smaller brushes and um, and have fun. Watercolor and stamping is a really hot trend right now too in the crafting industry. So, so, uh, so yeah, I think it's great. I don't think I, I'm never going to say that I think somebody else's art or craft or method is bad because I think they're all valid and we all have our our artistic we all want to do art for different reasons and um, you know if you want to paint a pretty picture that's fine if you want to you know you know make commentary on social injustice that's fine whatever your your motive and whatever your method is is all good as long as you're um, growing and you're enjoying and you're happy with um, with what you're doing and that's all questions. All right. We got caught up today. Yay. Yay. That's so awesome. I would love it if you guys could pop a comment. And remember, I'm going to be choosing a winner to win one of these uh, paintings. That's I'll pop right. in the mail. And probably a week, I'll pick a winner. So just uh, just let me know in the comments that you would like to win the painting. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this broadcast. And until next Friday at 1230 Eastern Time, happy crafting. Bye. Bye.